Hello and welcome. In this video, you're going to learn how to do two different micro bit button masher programs. This is how the first one's going to work. It's going to say get ready. And when the tick comes, you got to bash the button as fast as you can. Uh, now, this is a simple program. It's only got about nine lines of code and you should probably score way better than me. I've only got 14 on it. But the other one, well, the other one is really, really tricky. It involves having to make a decision, basically being able to press the button when either one or the other side is lit up. In the beginning, both sides are lit up, so you could press both buttons, but that only takes a few seconds. And now you have to, you have to judge where this is. And you can get a negative score. You gotta almost anticipate, but they go at random. My score is negative five. Maybe I made this game too hard. Maybe uh, you can use a bit more time than a quarter of a second. Nonetheless, I think these games are a lot of fun. So let's get started programming them. All right, let's begin from scratch. Google Microbit Python, and it's gonna open up Python editor for the BBC Microbit. Now I'm just going to full, full screen this maybe plus our uh, font size a little bit so you can see the code really really clearly and we can get started so what is it that we need at the start of our program we just need to say get ready so that's going to be a matter of saying display the scroll get ready now you can also specify the delay which is usually 150 milliseconds per letter. I mean, like I like to go about 100 because 150 is a bit slow. What else do we need? We need like a, a random delay or do we? I mean, we can basically get ready after this. We'll do some, we'll do some more symbols and we don't need a random delay. We're good, we're good. Actually, I was accidentally pressing a full stop and then I thought I pressed that one. It looks kind of nicer than a full stop. So get ready, boom. So after that, we can show the tick. Display.show, uh, that's image dot yes. Okay, so now we, we've, we are uh, displaying that after saying get ready. Okay, now comes the tricky bit. So my goal is to measure button presses for five seconds. However, if I put a sleep in there, it's no longer counting the presses because sleep basically tells the microbit to do nothing. So how can you uh, count a number of events or some event over a period of five seconds? Well, turns out there is this built-in variable called running time and running time is a floating point number since some point in the past. However, you can measure a change in running time. So let me show you uh, an example. So let's say we create two variables, start time and start time equals to running time. Remember, um, running time is just a, a floating point number that increases second by second. So this is like a, a, a built-in counter. We can have finish time and finish time can be start time plus 5,000. So finish time is five seconds from now. Then we maintain the sort of while true and we just need one if statement. If running underscore time is greater than finish time. That means game is over, right? Finish time. That means game is over. And in this case, we can say score equals to, and there's a special button that actually counts presses. So we don't even need an if statement every time the button is pressed. It's, it's called button, Sutton, button, underscore a dot get underscore presses. Okay, so I think we only need to display the score, right? 
So what's this going to look like? I'll copy that. We're going to say score. Uh, and the string here is going to need to be plus str. I mean, that should work. Let's rock and roll. Download. Oh, we don't even have a micro bit. Plug in whichever one. We'll plug in the blue one. Okay. Micro bit. There it is, it's flashing. Hopefully that's gonna work. No, 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 no. All right. Oh yeah, this says get ready. So now we gotta bash it for five seconds right here. Oh, line 10. Hey, that's not too bad. Finish time, what's the problem? Syntax error? If running time is greater than, okay, this is identical. Running time, running time is a function. It's a function call. Download, let's try this again, save. It's coming, it says get ready. I'm about to bash it. And score seventeen. I improved on the intro. And wow, that's interesting. And now it's gonna say zero. Um, quite simply, this resets to zero after it reads presses. And I did two presses after the first time it read them. So I need I need some way to just display my actual score a certain number of times for I in range maybe like we do a three. This is ugly. Blah. All right, we can break and then after it'll display my real score, it gets out. Um, guys, I, I'll leave this to you. Maybe you have some suggestions of a prettier way to do this. Uh, on the upside. May not be pretty, but it's gonna work. So it should display the correct score three times. Here we go. Get ready. Bash the button. Score? Uh, was that really, was that like 10? Is it that bad? Yeah, it's that bad. Okay, I'm not great at button bashing, mashing, but I can write these programs pretty well. Okay, so the first one is done. Now let's take it out. Let's get the other micro bit. And let's have a think about how we could do the advanced program. We're gonna need, we're gonna need two uh, we're going to need to light up essentially the individual LEDs on either side. So I think the best way to define those is in a function. I can't really think of anything uh, better than that. So let's just say, um, let's start with that. So def show left is going to be a function. And the uh, show right. Now, you can actually do it by addressing like LEDs in a list or a grid, but I like to do uh, just basically two for loops with X's and Y's. Um, I've, I'm not sure my memory isn't perfect, but like X's are going to work, I think, across this way. So we're going to have the X's are going to be in a narrower range. So for example, if X for X in range, um, the zero comma two, that's going to be like zero and one. And then for Y in range, all of Y. 
0 comma 5 then you're gonna write uh, pixel display dot set pixel and which pixel is like you do the x and the y right x comma y comma and then the light level which is gonna be 9 okay so if I um, I'm obviously gonna need some kind of running time finish time thing but why don't I just I can leave that there for a second why don't I just call this function um, I can call it here and I can copy the show right at the same time so they're both gonna have a value but if I if I copy this it's gonna light up one side of the screen and I'm gonna find out like which one is zero because I, I imagine this is gonna be oh come on line what 24 well that's pretty good if I got all the way to 24 yeah it's not def show left I'm calling the function not defining it that was yeah all right freestyle freestyle coding okay is it gonna be left because that's the left <sighs> 23 oh I still left the colon this is why you don't copy and paste kids seriously <laughs> all right this should work this should work is it gonna be left or right all right it's gonna say get ready and then it's either gonna light up left or right. Okay, lit up the left. So show left worked. So show right is gonna be three to five. Yes, so we've got, we're able to show right or left. That's pretty good. So what do we do now? Um, I think we could like, we need to randomly pick between them, so I guess we need to import random. Um, and then we could select the side. I, I think it's better if I just delete all of this, right? So if I say side equals to random dot rand int, and it could be just zero or one, right? So zero could be left, one could be right. And um, given that when the game has started, when the game has started, you sort of maybe want the, the display to be clear. I think it's already clear, but I, I'm just doing this just in case. So make some space. So we've picked the side. And now we could say if side double equals to zero. So that's if the side is left. Guess what? We could show left. And now we just need two if statements. If button, so the left is going to be button A. So if button underscore A dot is, or maybe we'll do was pressed was underscore pressed because we want to do it upon release you got to release it in time so if button a was pressed you don't you could basically say that that double equals true or you could just leave it like that um you can score plus equals to one we don't have score initialized i guess we need to create score then score equals to zero so we're going to increase score if it's button a and we're going to decrease score if it's button b since i'm running out of space i'm going to do a little coding hack here an if statement on one line and we are going to copy this and we're going to say if button b was pressed score minus equals one that's neat and guess what this is uh, the gods of copy and paste are with us here. Watch this. So if this is one, we're going to show right. And 
if button A was pressed, we're going to subtract and button B we're going to add. Okay. Um, we're looking pretty good. So we are, we are doing this. We're also going to need some kind of a delay under which this, um, this decision happens. And we're going to decide where to put the delay. I think it might be best to do it afterwards. Let's say sleep is 250. Let's do it there. Um, and now we need a function just like the one we had before that's going to check if the time is done and then display the score. So yeah, let's funnily enough, I have a copy of the code on my other monitor. I'm just going to, cause this is the same code we've had. This is identical. If running time is greater than finish time, score is gonna be, no, the score is gonna be whatever the score is. We're gonna print this thing. We're gonna run it three times and then we're gonna break out of this loop. Um, we could have some other sort of general condition for game over, right? Um, what if I created game on equals to true and instead of that that says while game on and here we could set game on equals to false yeah I think that's neater nearly fitting like 38 lines of code now do I expect this thing to work off the bat? Uh, not 100%. Wait a second. Am I swapping this? Oh, the other one's ready to go. So we'll put it on the other one. Download. Micro bit. Error. No error. Will it work? Here we go. Line. Be high. 21, 21. Oh, silly man, silly man, download. I'm, I'm like 80% confident, get ready. One, two. Oh, we are not clearing the display. So, after we've waited 250, we need to clear the display. Here we go. Don't get a negative score. That's my only hope. Don't get a negative score. Ah. Oh. Minus one. Oh, I'll try it one more time. Just, just, just because I need to at least try to get positive at least once. Oh my God. I was just, just late every time. This is going to be like minus seven. Minus two. Okay. So maybe don't make the game as hard as I did. Play around with this delay. Optimize it. You can make it awesome. You can compete um with your friends when you get good at it um when i first made this game probably about a year and a half ago i with these delays i actually got it to a point where i was averaging score of five but clearly this is something that requires a bit of practice okay that's a wrap for this tutorial enjoy guys all right, that's it for the button masher. If you enjoyed the tutorial, subscribe below, get them all. Why wouldn't you? And if you're wondering what to do next, well, here's going to be a micro Python introduction presentation that you're going to find interesting. And there is a reaction time circuit that measures reaction time in hundreds of a second. Have a look at those. See you later.